Hi, I'm Gabriel, and this is Learning English Path. And in this lesson, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about syllables in the English language. Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about syllables in the English language. Because this question comes from one of my subscribers on this YouTube channel, Eliza D. She asks, do you have any video where you explain syllables? How to divide a word in syllables? I really need to learn that. Spanish is my first language and it is totally different to English. Please, I hope you can get this me message and could advise me. Thank you. Thank you, Eliza, because this is something that uh, is not as easy as you might think. A lot of students... Uh, kind of struggle with this and guess what uh, this video this lesson I had to do more research on this topic myself before filming than any other video lesson that I've created so far and it's because there's there's a lot of uh, confusing little things, right? So let's get into it. The basic rule is simply that each vowel sound is one syllable, right? And to understand this uh, whole lesson, you have to know what a vowel is and what a consonant is. So these are the, the vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and for our purposes here, Y also. And Y can be used as a vowel or a consonant. And all the other consonants, um, uh, are all the other letters, excuse me, are consonants. So those are the single vowels, but I'm talking about vowel sound. So when we say vowel sound, we don't just mean these. We also mean the double vowels, right? E and U or U. Uh, and also diphthongs. These are, uh, a, a diphthong is when two different vowels are used together to create its own sound, right? Actually, it can also be three. You can have an I-G-H. I-G-H is also a one that makes a different sound, right? So it can be a vowel and a consonant also, right? We've got I-G-H, we have, um, we have O-W, we have uh, E-R, right? We have a lot of different diphthongs. So that's why I've put etc. here. So that's the basic rule, but there's a lot more to it than that. And here, I just want to remind you that when I say vowel sound, you need, that means you have to cut the schwa. <laughs> so what is a schwa? That means if you say cat, then you're doing, you're pronouncing it wrong <laughs> and you're adding an extra syllable. Cut the extra syllable at the end. I hear a lot of people, a lot of uh, non-native speakers say, saying cat, dog, fish, bird, guilt, right? This is, these are all one syllable words. All right, there's no uh at the end of the word here. That's a schwa and you need to uh, stop that first and foremost before you understand the rest, okay? So step one. So I've got a few steps here for you. And uh, step one is the most, uh, is the first thing that you do. So if it's a compound word, then you split the compound word. What is a compound word? 
This is a word that is made up of two words, okay? Or more than one word. For example, bedroom, bookcase, breakfast, football, popcorn. In each word, there is one, there are two words, right? We have bed and room. So it's easy, you split bed and room. Book and case, book case, right? Breakfast, football, popcorn. So this is step one because it's the easiest, the easiest to understand. However, if it's not a compound word, most words are not compound words, then you go to step two. This is split pr prefixes and suffixes. All right, so what is a prefix and a suffix? These are words that you add at the beginning and the end of a word to change its meaning, right? Or to, uh, to adapt uh, its meaning within the word family. So this takes the word family of use, right? So we have useful. Full here is a suffix. Right, so we split it between use and full. Also with less, useless, we split it here. Reuse, right, this is a prefix. So we split it between re and use. Misuse, using, right, it's the ing. Now here we have to get rid of the e, of course, but that's okay, we split it where the e would be. And user here is interesting because we have the the e on the other side now you might think well why not just why not split uh between the e and the r well that's because the er is a suffix in itself so we would split uh we want to keep the suffix or the prefix together right, at the expense of the, the letter here, all right, so if you encounter this difficulty, just know, keep the, the prefix or the suffix together. Step three, split between two consonants. For example, if you have two consonants together here, such as rabbit, you would split between the two B's, okay, rab, bit. Same with burger, burger. Same with window, win, do. Same with swimming. Now this is an interesting one because we have the suffix, right? So you might think, well, why not split it between the M and the I here? Well, that's because you're already adding an extra M to the word swim when you create this suffix, right? You need to change the word by adding an extra M. So because you're doing that, it's okay. It's okay to put the M on the, on the sec, in the second half here. Same here with runner, runner, okay? So here, because you're changing how many letters are before the suffix, you would go to step three and you would split it between the two consonants which are together. Step four. So this is a lead on from step three. So split between the consonants, but never split digraphs. Digraphs are combined consonants that make a single sound such as ch, sh, th, ck, ng, and there are many others, right? ph. So here we've got bachelor. You do not split between the c and the h because that would change those sounds, right? You want the ch sound. You don't want the k and the h. It's not back heller. It's bachelor. So because of that, you don't want to split the digraph. You want to keep it together. Bishop, you want to keep 
the sh together because it creates its own unique sound. Bish up. Pathology. Path all uj e. Rocket. The ck stays together. Rock it. And finger. Fing er because you want to keep these together, right? And remember that in this word, finger, it's not the same as, as you know, this is not a suffix. The er in this case, remember, is not a suffix because the er at the end of the word has nothing to do with comparison, right? It's not like, it's not like um, better or uh, it's not like faster, quicker, right? It's finger. It's completely different. Just like the word morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, has nothing to do with the present continuous, <laughs> right? I-N-G in the word morning has nothing to do with the present continuous tense, I-N-G. Step five, a consonant between two vowels. What do you do in this situation? Now, this is when it gets messy. <laughs> this is when it gets complicated, okay? So, listen to the vowel sound preceding the consonant, before the consonant. If it's a short vowel sound, then you split the word after the consonant. But if it's a long vowel sound, you split the word before the consonant. Now, if you don't know what short and long vowels are, I'll just really quickly with the, for example, with the letter O, the short vowel sound would be O, and the long vowel sound would be O. That's, so just remember the, the long vowel sound is actually the sound of the letter of the alphabet. So A, E, I, O, U, these are all vowel sounds. Short vowel sounds are A, E, I, O, U. So for example, these are short vowel sounds. So you split them after the consonant. Man, man is short, right? So it comes after the consonant, man, itch. Petal, pet is a short vowel sound. So it comes after the T. Riv, river. It comes after the V because the I is a short I. And modul. It's a short O sound, so it comes after the D here, right? Long vowel sounds, however, come before the consonant. So table, it's not table, right? It's not table, it's table. So because this is a long vowel sound, we split it up. It, we call this an open syllable. It's an, so because it's te, we split it before the next consonant. Result. This is e, so it's a long vowel sound. We split it before the s. Shiny. This is a long i. So shy, split, knee. Frozen. This is O, so it's before the Z. And pupil. Pupil is a long vowel sound, so it's split before the P. All right, this is a funny one, funny note. So you, because we're relying on pronunciation, right? We're relying a lot on pronunciation. We have to know which accent we are using. So, for example, in the USA, right, American English this is, people say banana. So, because of this, the middle syllable stays with the consonant, banana, because it's a short vowel, right? But with British English, it's b banana banana so we have the ah uh, right it's it's we consider the the uh, this sound 
right? It's like a schwa sound. This is a schwa sound, really. We consider this sound to have an open syllable. You might think, well, it's not, it's not a long vowel. It's not a, we don't say banana, right? But they say banana. And because of that, it's not a short vowel sound. It's not a, ah. it's not a, ah. it's a. Ah. So because it's a, ah, we keep it open here. That's probably the most confusing little rule in syllable splitting. Okay, so you know what? It's not that important. I have to share that with you, okay? If you're worried that you don't understand this little rule, don't worry, because 99.99% of native speakers don't either, right? But I'm just sharing with you that ah is an open syllable, and so we split it before the next consonant. Same as here, okay, with water. We wouldn't split it after the T. We'd say wa Ter. So the a, uh, the the ba, nana, the wa, ter, that counts as an open syllable. So we split it there. Same here with tradition. But I also wanted to point out to you this rule. So if the word ends in t-i-o-n or s-i-o-n, you do not split here. You do not split put D-I-T split, even though this is a short vowel sound, dit, we would not uh, split the T-I-O-N. You need the T-I-O-N because it's a proper suffix, right? And the S-I-O-N as well. Now we have step six, the silent E rules. Now you know what the silent E is? It is the E at the end of a word, but does not make a vowel sound, right? So because it's silent, it's not a vowel sound. And because it's not a vowel sound, it's not a syllable, right? So the rule, the general rule is to include it as part of the last syllable because it is silent and therefore adds no extra vowel sound. For example, place, Gabe, mate, bike, believe, right? We don't say place, sir. <laughs> we don't say Gabe or Gabe. We don't say matter. We say place, Gabe, mate, bike. And then those are all one syllable and then believe two syllables, right? Also, sometimes U-E is silent. So we have dialogue, right? We don't say dialogue or dialogu, right? Tongue, fatigue, unique, right? The the syllable and the sound finishes before the U-E. So you have to know uh, what the when you see U-E to not include it as a sound. Also, words ending in E-D can be part of the preceding syllable or not, depending on pronunciation. For example, learned, bounced, right? These are one syllable words, learned and bounced. This is, these are one syllable. Busted, landed, they are two syllables. So if you know your IPA, IPA can help you a lot with this, all right? And I can appreciate that if you're just reading the word, you might not know how to say it, whether it is learned or bounced, right? But it's a lot easier if you have heard it and you are reading as well, right? Now there's spe a special rule for words that end in C-K-L-E, all right? So we have freckle, tickle, buckle. In this case, the L-E makes its own sound, right? We have freckle, 
cool. So we would split between the K and the L, all right? Because this is a separate sound, it's a separate syllable. Freckle, tickle, buckle. But if it's just a word that ends in consonant plus LE, like for example, apple, table, and syllable, then you would split one consonant before the L. All right, see, here's where it gets complicated. I told you. <laughs> so you would split this just before the P in apple, right? You would split table just before the B. And you would split the word syllable just before the B, right? So whether it's two consonants, three consonants, or one consonant before LE, you split just one consonant before the L. But if it's a vowel that comes before the L, then don't split because it's just another silent E word. Veil, file, meanwhile. It's part of the last syllable, okay? Finally, step seven, all right? This is the last one. When two vowels together, when well, there are two vowels together, but they are creating two distinctly different sounds. For example, trio, bias, create, boa, and Gabriel, right here, I-E. So, you have to listen for the word, because if there's a y or a w sound between the two consonants, that's where you split it. Okay, so trio. Listen to that word carefully. You've got the y that splits the, the I and the O, right? Trio. Trio. It's not just tree. Oh, right, you have a hard time saying the word if you don't have the y sound. So that's where you split the syllable. Trio, bias, create. Listen, there's that y sound. And here, boa, you have a w sound. Boa. And then Gabriel, you have the y sound, right? Now a note on trip songs. Uh, three vowel sounds that make one sound. That's what a trip a trip song is. Some speakers, depending on where they are from, divide a trip song into two syllables, a diphthong and a schwa. However, formally, when we're talking about dividing them in writing by the spelling, they are uh officially only one syllable. This is strange. This is actually the strangest rule in syllables. So for example, fire. This is one syllable. We even know a lot of people, most people say fire, fire. When we're talking about how to split this up, we don't we say it's one syllable, even though it's quite clearly fire, right? Higher, choir, inspire. But this is two syllables, inspire, choir, only one, higher, fire, only one, because it's a trip song. You have to understand this is I-R-E and it's three vowel sounds together, but it's a trip song. It's not a separate syllable. Complicated. The same with pure and cure. All right. One syllable. And this is the most peculiar part. This is the strangest one. We have our, sour, and then flower is pronounced the same as this flower, flower and flower. But even though they are pronounced exactly the same, we say that this is only one syllable, but this kind of flower is two syllables. 
very strange. And that is why I'm telling you that you should not be too concerned about exactly how and where to split the word when you're spelling it, okay? Hardly anyone really, really cares. Um, the main reason for wanting to know, to understand syllables is so that when you're reading something and you don't know the word, you don't skip over it just because it's a long word. Okay, that's why you want to learn syllables. You want to learn syllables so that when you're reading, you know how it's pronounced, right? But this, uh, you can work on that with a lot of different phonics, phonics rules. But that is the main reason why syllables, syllabication is important. It's so that you know how to say a word when you read it for the first time. So you, you are a confident reader and you're not put off by reading. Otherwise, this kind of thing, really don't worry too much. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned about English syllables. I certainly learned more than I knew before about syllables. So, if you want to continue your English learning and learn English with songs, then please click on the link for 101 Songs to Learn English. It's a free, I'll say it again, free PDF guide that I will email to you, 125 pages, and then I will email you every week with new words for you to learn, and that's only for my email subscribers, all right? Lastly, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like because I release three new videos each and every week and you don't want to miss it. And please leave a comment if you want me to teach something that you're having trouble with. I will make a lesson for you if you ask for it, all right? Keep learning, my friend, and keep going.